Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning into another Super Tease video, and this is it. We got the massive wave of class tuning adjustments that are coming in on the next reset for October 3rd. 30th. If you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with news related to World of Warcraft, then make sure to smash that subscribe button. Your support is greatly appreciated in my long-term goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers. But there is a lot of changes, and some specializations are going to be pretty upset, and others are going to be very happy, I think, with this round of changes. For Blood Death Knight, we're seeing significant buffs to all of your core abilities. 15% to Blood Boil, 20% to Heart Strike, 10% to Blood Plague, and 20% to Death Strike. There is definitely possibilities for Blood Death Knight to slip into PvP as a possible viable specialization. I think there's a lot of tank specs actually flying under the radar right now that people are just not really willing to give a go. I've seen a couple of prop paladin clips popping up with like 3 million crits. Um, so yeah, this is a bit worrisome, I think, possibly in PvP, but in PvE, obviously, you're going to like this. Um, I think I'm at the plus of the month, prop warriors trending as the highest you know, represented tank. Um, so these are pretty significant. They're also buffing Sand Lane, given the changes that they did previously. They're trying to adapt to those. Vampiric Strikes proc rate is going up by 10% to 35 and 25. As since the Blood Queen duration is being increased by 5 seconds and Gift of the Sand Lane will increase the effectiveness of the Blood Queen by 200% off from 150%. So Blood Decays are pretty happy. I don't know if Sand Lane will also apply to Unholy. If it does apply to Unholy because it's it's under the Blood Umbrella, it might not. Could be worth trying. There's been a lot of stuff that's bugged. I've seen a lot of like seemingly like ninja nerfs to certain things i think enhancement shamans just found that their wind fury weapon was nerfed randomly on tuesday or wednesday by like 50 or 60 percent i've noticed like aim shot damage has been reduced since the last time i played as well without any notes about it so you might want to just give random things a try because you never know if they bugged or what's going on with them uh for boomkin they're trying to increase your single target effectiveness and more build flexibility since some talents are just they're kind of bad um so let's see what's going on celestial alignment incarnation chosen the will reset a raid encounters starfall is getting a six percent damage star surge is getting eight percent but not in pvp i think that's fair uh starfire is getting five percent it doesn't really matter too much and wrath gets a ten percent unless you're running some wrath cheese one shot build i don't think this is going to matter too much shooting stars and crashing stars are getting increased by 20 percent crashing stars last time i tested was in like top end like 400k so this could be like a decent bit of damage towards it um, and shooting stars is nice, uh, the 20% on that. But Sunseeker Mushroom is going to grow less often. So if you're running the Starfall build in BGs, this is probably going to feel like a nerf. Um, and Touch of the Cosmos, which I just don't like. I really wish they would go back to the old shooting stars where our dots gave us instant proc instant spenders or free spend Whatever you want to call them now, free spenders. Um, because now they're increasing it by to 15% for Wrath and 22% for Starfire. Maybe this, maybe with the 22% on Starfire, if you're getting trained and you're getting a lot of instant Starfires, maybe. It's a maybe, but I just don't really like this talent. Um, Power of the Goldrin's damage is getting increased by 25%, but not in PvP. And I don't know what's going on with that because it doesn't do any damage in PvP. So, I mean, maybe they're worried about this because it's damage stacking into Star Surge and they think Star Surge is in a fine spot as it is. That's the only thing that makes sense at the moment, but Goldrin is like pretty much you never select it in PvP. Uh, Rattle the Stars is also now getting nerfed. Uh, Starfall and Star Surge down 2%. So overall, Star Surge is getting like a 2% nerf. Um, New Moon and Half Moon damage reduced by 5%. In PvP, weren't playing these. Um, I don't, they just buffed these and so I'm just nerfing them down a little bit. But I don't, I don't think it really matters. So for Boomkin, this is like hard to say if anything really changes of any significance, to be honest. At least in PvP. Uh, for Resto Druids, you're getting your like damage healing buff. So your Heart of the Wild is going to last longer. So you're going to get faster clones for a longer period of time. And you're going to get more time to do damage to heal. And your Dream of Scenarius is going to do more healing from the damage that your abilities do between Wrath and Shred. So there's possibilities for Restos to get like a Melee Wings for Holy Paladins, what they'd call it. Or Fist Weaver build for Mist Weaver. Um, that... I mean, in twos, is going to be really good. I don't know about BGs, um, but in arena, it could definitely pop up a bit. Now, BM Hunter is getting a lot of nerfs. It's a lot of nerfs. Um, they're trying to buff their AoE, but not your not your single target, basically. Uh, Bleak Powder is no longer going to damage its primary target, which is a huge nerf. I just played my BM Hunter actually to 2300 in one sitting today, um, even without the bugs. Uh, and this is like 10% of my damage, usually on average on the primary target. So this is like a 10% loss off the top. Uh, pack Leader's Frenzy Tear proc chance reduced to 10 from 20. And Pack Leader Vicious Hunt damage reduced by 10%. I already was, wasn't even bothering to look at Pack Leader. So this is making me just like not even want to look at it even more. Um, 
It's overperforming single target, but lackluster in AOE. Barb shot, it did get a significant buff recently. I think it was like 100%, now it's down 25. It, this is still a lot because it's a, a, a big contributor of your overall damage. They're buffing Stomp, which doesn't really matter in PvP. Um, it was doing very minor amount of damage when I was testing it. Multi-shot damage increased by 100%. I don't know, maybe it's worth pressing it in PvP. Like maybe in BGs, you can run a stomp multi-shot build or something like that. But in arena, I think that this is not going to matter. More or less, it's going to feel like a nerf. Uh, explosive Venom now procs at three down from five and will appropriately apply Serpent Sting to enemies regardless of the distance to the caster. You're already kind of getting Serpent Sting applications through uh, your kill shot procs or your black arrow kill shot procs now. So it's not, I don't think this matters too much. MM Hunter, you guys, I swear they put stealth nerfs in for aim shots doing like way less damage recently. And I felt really weak on my marksmanship Hunter throughout this week, unless you're fighting a mage, of course. So this nerf right here is the biggest one. Uh, black arrow getting a 10% reduction. Um, Bleak Powder and Shadow Surge are getting increases of 25%. They're not really a huge amount of your overall damage though. I think black arrow is a much bigger proportion. Uh, and Symphonic Arsenal is getting another buff by 15%. Um, and I think for them, it's the talent in the Dark Ranger that increase your rapid fire and aim shot by like 20% or something was removed. That's like the, the biggest loss of power. Mistweaver is going to be crazy good. It's going to be disgustingly good. I saw a clip of Mistweaver. I'll try to have it play here while I'm talking over this if I remember to, to go grab it from my stream because Fistweaver was so broken. It was absolutely so broken. And it's getting 6% more overall healing. Your spinning crane kick will transfer 110% of its damage for 90%. Jade Fire Teachings now increases Ancient Teachings by 160% from 140. Rush Rushing wind kicks damage increased by 150%. Rushing winds now increased renewing mist healing by 100% for duration by up by 550. This spec is going to be an absolute monstrosity. Yulon's whisper healing also increased by 400%. Jade Bond now increases mastery gust of mist healing by 20% down from 60 though. Uh, and we're excited that the Chi mastery build exists and is powerful in the right conditions, but numerically its output has been above where we're comfortable. We're decreasing the effectiveness of this build without breaking the cooldown reduction gameplay to feel, keep the feel the same and compensating baseline to shrink the difference between the high end output and regular play. So I think Fist Weavers, you're basically a ranged Fist Weaver now. They're definitely gonna be taking over. Paladins, I know you guys are thinking like, is this really all that's happening to Paladins? There are PvP changes at the end of this as well that do address them quite heavily. Uh, but your Beacon of Virtue is going to be 1% more mana in PvE, also PvP. And your Holy Shock is going to cost 0.2% more mana in all content. For Disciplined Priest, I was surprised to see these buffs. And these buffs don't get offset by nerfs. Um, you're getting 20% more Radiance healing, 15% more Flash healing, and your Premonition Piety will increase healing by 20% from 15, and your Preemptive Care will increase Atonement duration by 4 seconds up from 3. So I was very surprised to see Dis Priest buffs, considering it was already kind of at the top, and given the nerfs to Paladin, it's likely probably just going to take their spot. Uh, for Shadow, Psychic Link now causes direct damage to inflict 30% of the damage to affected uh, targets from Vampiric Touch. So a little, little tiny bit of a buff here. I don't think it's really a huge consequence. Uh, Master Assassin Critical Strike Chance granted effect reduced to 20% from 25%. Assassin was doing really good. I would, I don't know, like a tournament level of his standing out more than some other specializations, but in PP is a bit surprised to see this. It's, it was just really, just really solid. Um, but it's getting a little bit of a nerf elemental shaman you guys are done you're dead it's over for you guys in this patch like between these changes maybe not these ones so much but the pp ones i think ellie is ellie is in gonna be in a really rough spot you guys flew a little too close to the sun uh chain lightning damage increased by 40 percent, but not in pvp 15 by lava burst 15 percent by ellie blast but these are all not in pvp and stormbringer is really dead because now it's only going to give you one instant chain lightning or lightning bolt instead of two and Stormbringer was already kind of really difficult to pull off in PvP, so we're very sad about that. Volcanic Surge now increases Earthquake Chain Lightning damage only by 5% down from 15. You guys must have been really good in PvE to get nerfed like this hard, dude. Echo Chamber now increases the damage of Elemental Overloads by 20% down from 40%. And Ascendance will now increase the damage of Elemental Overloads by 100% down from 150. Premiance will now only grant you 20% haste during Ascendance down from 25. But your Ice Fury is going up to 200% from 150%. So a little bit of an Ice Fury trade-off. Um, so this will be, this will be like nice in PVP by at least a little bit, but with the changes, the nurse coming to ascendance and overload that are coming, I think you guys are gonna be in a rough spot now, uh, for enhancement shaman. Lightning Bolt's getting reduced by 10%, but not in PvP. Chain Lightning's getting reduced by 10%, but not in PvP. And Stormbringer's Tempest is also getting reduced by 15%, but not in PvP. So you dodge some of these, but the Wind Fury weapon nerfs that a lot of shamans are specul speculating has gone through, either it's a bug or it's been through without any notes, um, seems to be... I'm seeing a lot of handsome shamans still not playing this build, um, even despite that. Uh, for restoration shamans, uh, I don't know why they didn't give you this in PvP, because like you don't do any damage in PvP anyways, but you're not going to get it, so too bad. 
Um, forty percent chain lightning damage and fifteen percent lava burst damage, but you're not getting in PvP. Now warlocks, you're getting a lot of love. You are getting a lot of love. Uh, not affliction in PvP, but in PVE you are. Hellcaller, wither damage increased by twenty five percent. Agony fifteen percent. Corruption twenty five percent. Unstable affliction twenty percent, but not in PvP. So after you're not getting much better. Demonology though, you guys are getting a lot. Dreadstalkers will have a hundred percent chance to grant you a demonic core up from fifty, so you're getting more instant damage. And your fell guard, your grimmar fell guard, is doing one hundred and twenty five percent more up from. 60 you're getting doubled and your hand of Gul'dan is getting a 25 percent buff and your dread stalkers are getting a 20 percent buff destruction you'll also be happy with these changes your hell caller wither is getting a 25 percent increase but not in pp your single target casted spells like chaos bolt immolate incinerate though are getting 10 percent 25 percent 20 percent respectively conflagrate is getting a 20 percent damage increase but not in pp so not not the instant spells but the casted ones are rain of fire is also getting a 20 percent buff in pp i don't think it's gonna matter too much warriors you finally got some buffs you finally got some buffs i must say it feels like it's been a while but you finally got some buffs executes getting a 10 percent damage increase demolish is getting a 15 percent damage increase hopefully it's not going to tickle at times now anymore slayer reap the storm damage increased by 25 percent, but not in pvp they're still a little bit hesitant about slayer and pvp however slayer strike damage will be increased by 15 percent. mortal strike overpower dreadnought these are all 15 percent increased and 20 percent for cleave survivability is still a little bit of a concern would have liked to perhaps seen a little bit of an increase towards the absorption of ignore pain because i think survivability is you know a little bit more damage was definitely low for arms um i was surprised to not see some damage buffs as well for something like demon hunter at least in pvp for fury you're also getting some buffs unfortunately not slayer slayer reap the storm damage increased by 25 percent, not in pvp uh but your slayer strike damage is getting increased by 15 percent. mountain thane lightning strikes are getting a 30 percent increase might be worth at least giving it a go who knows um for bloodthirst 20 percent, bloodbath 20 percent, and rampage 10 percent. so warriors getting some damage buffs again survivability at least for arms is a little low would like to see something for ignore pain and demolish for prot i don't know maybe this could be viable in pvp or something like that but 15 percent increase there for boomkins i knew i was right about this our frenzied regen was bugged the whole time and not healing enough i knew it from switching from boomkin to feral and i'm like this is not healing there's no way this is the right amount so our frenzied regens will now heal five percent up from three percent they also buffed rejuve and wild growth by 20 percent you're pretty much never going to use wild growth and rejuve heals for such a pathetically low amount it doesn't justify using it let alone leaving balance form to actually be able to use it i only ever used it when i was running d curse it was like the only thing that i could do i'm like behind the pillar with my team hiding in a corner here's a rejuve healer i'm trying my best to get you to live so probably not not a big deal this is a much bigger deal uh, and then the changes to the damage above is like a very minor nerf to star surge if anything um feral druid they nerfed a lot of the stuff that i was talking about they, they're nerfing incarnation it's only going to be a 10 percent damage increase down from 15 and they nerfed the king of the jungle pvp talent to only be three percent healing and three percent movement speed and only stacks three times down from five percent four times so it was 20 percent before and now it's nine percent so an 11 percent um decrease and healing received and movement speed which i think these are the two main things for feral the, right on the money i think with this i think it's a fair number as well to adjust it by for beast mastery hunter this is where we're starting to get like pretty rough here bleak powder it seems redundant to nerf its damage when they also made it not hit the primary target it this just seems redundant because in the changes above they said it doesn't hit the primary target so it's already doing zero percent it already got a 100 percent nerf uh its aoe is very negligible uh dark ranger withering fires additional black arrows are also getting nerfed by 50 percent down to 25 from 50 so pretty significant nerfs overall to beast mastery hunter marksmanship hunter you're also pretty sad bleak powders damage again if it's not hitting the primary target it doesn't really matter um so it's reduced by 30 dark ranger withering fires additional black arrows are now cast at 25 percent effectiveness down from 50 so dark ranger nerfs across the board uh for miss weaver they're aware of the crackling jade lightning immediately on hands heals on pets so now it's only going to chain to two additional enemies down from four in pvp combat and holy paladins you did not get through this change scot-free your herald of the sun blessing of anchi will now only increase holy shock by 150 percent down from 200 percent your eternal flame got a 10 percent nerf light smith will now only increase crusader strikes damage by 40 percent down from 120 percent so a lot of like melee wings nerfs or to glory healing decreased by 10 percent on top of the eternal flame and mana regeneration decreased by 25 percent pp up from 20 along with some of the mana changes we saw earlier as well to the holy shock blessing of summer is only going to transfer 12 percent of the healing into damage down from 18 and we saw blessing of summer in the tournament hitting pretty hard so i'm not surprised to see it here hammer of wrath damage increased by 30 percent though and judgment damage has been increased by 30 percent and crusader strike baseline increased by 30 percent uh avenging crusader now only transfers 200 percent of the damage into healing down from 260 percent 
So targeting a lot of the core spells for Holy Paladin. I don't know if it's the sky is falling for you necessarily with this, but I think they're pretty on the money with the, the abilities that they're hitting for this specifically. For Discipline Priests, they're looking at the balance of their Hero Town Trees, which definitely needed to be looked at. Uh, Void Heart will now increase Atonement Healing by 30% up from 20, given how much you have to cast and how easy it is to shut down to try and help you out. And they're also nerfing the um, Archon, or Oracle, sorry. Make sure the priest. Premonition of Solace reduces damage taken by 10% down from 15. And Premonition of Solace absorption defect decreased by 15%. But remember all the baseline core abilities that got buffed on top? Those seem to be going through unless something changes, which maybe it will. Um, for Holy Priest, you're getting a little bit of love. Renew 20%. Prayer of Mending healing increased by 10%. Again, I think your mana was still kind of a main pain point, but maybe Paladin mana coming down will even that out possibly. Um, for Shadow, they, they're looking at Void Leech. Uh, Void Leech is going to heal every three seconds up from two and the healing has been increased to four percent up from three but it will be reduced to two percent in pvp now it, it was a, such a sizable amount of your healing that i'm glad that they are looking at it specifically i don't know if this is really enough to tilt you know to tilt it far in the favor of like shadow priest is now actually a selectable target in pvp um it might be it's definitely worth trying and it's good that they're looking at it i just don't know if this is enough to actually do it to tilt the numbers that way collapsing void was very unnecessarily nerfed i think collapsing void was more than fine hitting for a million damage it has a huge ramp big animation should be a big payout i'm really disappointed to see this one nerfed by 10 percent. i think it was totally fine um the way that it was it was honestly a really cool ability so a bit sad to see that for shadow this is where we get into elemental ascendance now increases the damage of elemental overloads by only 25 percent while active in pvp down from 75 percent so ascendance is like the big window where you're actually doing something as a shaman um so this is a huge nerf to your overall meaningful burst massive nerf you guys got one week i'm sorry guys one week i feel bad for mez whoever's watching mez's stream at blizzard that hates him even though he's the nicest guy ever plays death knight they nerfed that off off a cliff played elemental shaman nerfed off a cliff beast mastery hunter nerfed off a cliff mez i don't know who's got a vendetta out for you because you you're the nicest guy on the planet but every class you re-roll to gets nerfed really badly but we know you're good enough to make it work despite that so Keep, pers keep persevering, Mez. Keep persevering. Lightning Bolt did get a 10% damage increase, but we don't get the two instants from our Tempest build, so I don't think this really does much, unfortunately. Uh, and then apparently enhancements were getting really big Flame Shock crits because um, Totemic Whirling Earth now increases Flame Shock direct damage by 150% PP down from 300%. I have some Enhancement Shamans, Piff, in my chat telling me they're hitting like 2.5 million, and then I have other Enhancement Shamans like Saul telling me that it really wasn't that good. But basically now that that Voltaic build is maybe dead, um, so th this is a pretty significant nerf to Enhancement Shaman. For Resto Shaman, we got Healing Wave and Healing Surge buffs. Some some love to you. You know, you didn't get damage for some reason. You don't do any. I don't know about that. But you did get some healing uh, towards Healing Wave and Healing Surge, which is really nice. And for Arms Warrior and PP specifically, Culling Cyclone now increases Bladestorm's damage by 20% up from 10 per stack, which is nice. And Slam, I don't know what this is. Again, it feels like a random one. Got a 40% increase. I don't, I don't think it's enough on that ability. It also just seems like a really random ability. And also, this one's kind of random. The Colossus smashes damage. Like, it's actual, I think, assume it's activation damage. You crush the ground. Got a 60% increase. Now, again, the, the buffs up above are, like, more than enough as far as damage, I think, are concerned. So this, this, these two kind of just seem a little random. Um, and for Fury, uh, your Culling Cyclone will now also increase your Bladestorm's damage by 20% up from 10% per stack in PvP combat. So really surprised to not see Demon Hunter at all on this. I do think there's a lot of good changes and a lot of specs that were underperforming that are going to be very happy with uh, with the changes that came through and they caught a lot of bugs, which is nice. I think it might have been pretty heavy-handed with Beast Mastery and pretty heavy-handed um, with elemental shaman and mistweaver might have just got giga buffed into omega giga land somewhere like that um bit worried about that we'd like to see maybe some survivability increases to warriors as well but overall i think a pretty decent um round of class tuning so other than that thank you very much for tuning into the video hope you guys enjoyed this update and i will see you in the next one